All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And today we've got our final thoughts on the Lucid Air, even though there's some new news on it. We'll get over all that oh, in a second. Oh, I missed that. Okay. It's just a new spec of okay. the same car. Uh, we've got some renders of a Pixel Fold that should be interesting to talk about mm-hmm. and see. And to wrap it all up, Andrew's got his mind changing again on which smartwatch he's going to use. We will get an explanation. Yes, we will. But first... Uh, this weekend, I uh, had a quick tweet that a lot of people were interested in, so I just wanted to go over yeah. it real quick, which is uh, the power wall and solar system that I have set up mm-hmm. finally, I don't, I don't want to say paid off, that's not the right term, no. but the investment finally made a lot of sense because yeah. I had a power outage. I wasn't even home, um, but basically what happens is the way, you know, I've talked about this in the past a little bit on Twitter, and I think I'm eventually going to make a video on the solar okay. panel setup and the backup batteries. But basically, during the day, when I'm not home, the tons of sun is shining on the roof, and the solar panels are collecting lots of energy, and that is more energy than the house is using, so mm-hmm. the house stores that excess energy in the batteries. Yeah. When I get home, the lights turn on, the appliances turn on, the energy gets used. And so when the sun goes down, the house gets powered by those batteries overnight until I wake up in the morning again and the solar takes over. So basically you can kind of live mostly off the grid if you have big enough batteries. Um, And the bonus is when the grid goes down, if there's a power outage, you don't necessarily even notice which is kind of interesting. So that happened for the first time. I was actually at my sister's wedding in Raleigh. Congrats to the bride and groom. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. Um, And while I was sitting uh, watching people have a good time dancing, uh, I noticed I got a notification on my phone that said that the grid had disconnected. Now, this is when like a hurricane was coming up the the coast. So it was like windy in the entire Mm -hmm. eastern part of the U.S., um, so I don't even know what happened, but I did get that notification and I opened the app and took a screenshot as you saw on Twitter. Sure enough, um, no connection to the grid, 100% power in the batteries. I'm not home. So like there's plenty of energy to last like 24 plus hours, yeah. but that means the fridge would stay on the whatever True. things that were happening that keep the HVAC running would stay on. Everything would be fine. And I'd come back and no one would even notice if someone was home, they wouldn't even notice. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but that's, you know, it's been a good experience so far having cool. the off the grid. I've had a $0 power bill for four months in a row. That's awesome. I, I also really appreciated how in the start you said like how it was exciting, but not really exciting. Cause it, it's one of those things or paid off, but not, it, it's one of those things where it's like you invest in something or invest time in something for like a disaster and you're not hoping for the disaster right. to happen, but right. like. You kind of want to see, make sure it yeah. works. Um, so, like, I, I don't know. I found that very funny. I remember we went uh, hiking one time in Glacier, and I spent a whole week learning what to do if you see a bear. So you're not hoping for a bear, but if there's a bear, I'm ready. But it's the last day, and I'm <laughs> sitting in the car. I'm like, man, we haven't seen a bear. I haven't gotten to see if, like, my instincts would kick in. And then yeah. last day, bear, instincts, perfect. Nice. Just saying. Nice. I'm, I'm almost curious. I've read some things and I don't think they're right about trying to like make lots of noise and appear large. I'll teach you later. Okay. Yeah, so if no I worries. ever see a bear in yeah. Kearney, New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah. But um, yeah, but, so Powerwall worked. I'm excited yeah. for that. Uh, solar panels are something I, I've been thinking about for the house. It's I have plenty of other work to do before I get to that point, but it seems super interesting. And it I is. would love to know what your whole setup is if you make a video on it later or possibly what some other setups are. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to wait till through the winter till I you know, get a full idea of like, these are some short days. So there's way less solar. Yeah. So I get a better idea. But like to get the big picture, I think what most people's primary concern is, is how long will it take to pay for itself? So in the summer when they were finishing the installation, the first few days I had in the summer in the prime of like long, hot, sunny days Mm -hmm. were like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm generating way more electricity than I'm using. Um, But now we're getting into the winter, which is the opposite, which is like, all right, maybe you're using a lot of heat, which is powered by electricity and the days are way shorter and a lot of cloudier and you don't have as much electricity going in. So less backup. So I'm, you know, I'm going through the whole process, but yeah, so far. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty Enjoying good. Enjoying it? Nice. Zero dollar power bills. It's a good time. So stay tuned for that eventual video maybe next summer. Um, but we do want to talk about the Lucid Air. The Lucid Air I mentioned yeah. has a little bit of new news. Okay, maybe yeah. I'll can just, you tell me that before I... Uh... I'll start with that. Yeah, they are officially bringing to market the cheapest variants of the Lucid Air. So uh, the one we had that we reviewed was the Grand Touring, and that one started at $154,000. 
Okay. It's, a, it's an expensive car, yeah. obviously. It's a luxurious big sedan, which is great. They made a cheaper rear-wheel drive version with a metal roof, not glass roof. Okay. And it starts way down at, I think, $87,000. What's the mileage on that? It'll get 400 miles of range, which is still oh. very solid. So it's it's that's really cool. it's a much okay. more appealing. I think that's going to be the ideally highest volume selling version that they make. Even though it's not all wheel drive, it's still electric. It's still yeah. got like a great responsive powertrain. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's still that lucid interior people want. It, does it have like more range? Because generally with EVs, we've been seeing all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. You'll usually gain, you know, at that three hundred, it'll be like you either get like. 300 or 320 so maybe 20 more miles of range but they, i think a battery pack like that yeah they did put a smaller battery in this in this okay, one as well. okay. so it's like a 93 kilowatt hour battery oh but that's cool so that's why they can make it cheaper because yes batteries right. are expensive and here's the fun part this modular battery system and we didn't get to show it in our video uh actually has cutouts in parts of the battery that makes sense so in the rear seat footwell yeah. instead of having your feet up high they cut out parts of the battery right there so your feet have more room to slide under the, uh, the driver's seats. As so. two hosts that are over six feet tall, it's thank well played. you, Lucid. It's we really, appreciate that It's a well lot. done. Look, I like this car a lot. I had some hot takes about the design, which is, it's ugly. But we'll, uh -huh. we'll maybe we'll get to that in a second. That's what I wanted to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think the car itself, the way I, I, I went through, I, I drove with it, I used it, I lived with it for over a week. I think almost, almost a week and a half, two weeks. And like the technology in it, the motors, the drivetrain, the one pedal driving, the responsiveness of everything, the software, the way it's organized and built as a car is excellent. So when I see $154,000 price tag, that's what I'm expecting. Yes. And this is a performance spec too. So it's all wheel drive, over a thousand horsepower, under three seconds, zero to 60, 450 miles of range. I think it's like $170,000 spec, incredible car. So that is a lucid way, and that is that is sort of the theme of the video, is like they did a really good job with all of the parts of this car. And if you compare this to, let's say, Tesla's flagship, which is the Model S, which mm -hmm. starts at $100,000, they outdid, one by one, each of the most important pieces of the Model S. More range, faster peak charging, you know, better build quality, better luxury, more yeah. space inside. So I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, you do pay for it. <laughs> it yeah, you pay more. for it. Well, that's why, so like, well, all right. I have a couple thoughts here, which is kind of yeah, why I, mean, I wanted to talk about this because I like really enjoyed the car. I think I don't, and you even mentioned looks are subjective. Like there are people out there who like the looks of that. People love Dude, it. One of the things when we had the Lucid Air and what was the Ferrari that we had? 296 GTB. So we had both of them parked next to each other in the parking lot and we were, it got them like the same day we were both out there looking. A Uber, weird flex, but okay. Weird, great flex. <laughs> was a weird My day. job rules. But an Uber driver drove by with a passenger in the car and stopped because he wanted to come look and he wanted to look at the air, not the Ferrari. Yeah, that was interesting. That was very funny. And also props to that passenger who also came out to look at them Just while was out. trying to get driven home after work. But, I suspect um, that the Ferrari was so low, it was actually fully hidden by the Lucid. I, I literally said to him, I told him what it was and told him a bunch about it. And then I said, also, there's a Ferrari right there. And he's like, oh, no, I'm looking at this. I was like, oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I guess he was into EVs and stuff like that. But I, um, I had a clip that I cut from the autofocus video, which was some guy, I was shooting in the back and then some guy was like driving around and he stopped and he's like, what is that? And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a Lucid. And he was like, what, who makes it? And I was like, oh, I, right. I forgot how to explain is, this. It's like the and, one plus. Yeah. And I, so I, I kind of, maybe I'll send this clip to you, Adam. I'll, I'll include that audio, which is like, I'm rolling and I hit the camera record button again. And he's like, it's a new company called Lucid. Lucid. Lucid, yeah. How many are they running for? This is 150. Oh. They made a, they're not making very many, but they're expensive. Lucid yeah. Right. And I was like, yeah, it looks luxurious. Yeah. It has that look to it. It's a big sedan with the two-tone and the glass everywhere. Yeah. There are things I like about it. I, I agree with you on the two-tone, not a big fan. I actually yeah. don't like it because I think it looks like with the quote-unquote dumpy back, it, it looks like it's a place for, it looks like a convertible because the roof is a different color and it looks like it has a place to go into the back almost. Right. Yeah. And I don't love that. Um, but I like the front. I was thinking like if it was a convertible, I'm picturing that glass roof folding and it making the same sound as like the Royal Flex Pie, the like <laughs> creaking and like creaking <laughs> sliding back. 
It, yeah. it is an interesting looking car. Um, I like the front though. What you call? It, said it look, you said it looked like a whale shark. I said it looked like a whale I shark. I can't unsee that. Well, now. what's funny is because I thought the front looked like a whale shark, and then you open the back, and the way the trunk lifts like a, from like all the way in the bottom and just opens the mouth, I was like, oh my god, that looks more like a whale shark. Yeah, um, inspired but, by. But I, I, I like the outside. I think there are better looking cars out there. Um, but I don't hate it. And then when you get on the inside of that thing, it is just. It's fantastic. You forget about the outside when you're on Dude, the inside. The inside is so quality. It's just yeah. like everything feels. Uh, I actually was comparing it to the e, the Mercedes EQS we had because that That's was that. one where it met both of these cars. Feel like they're mostly focusing on the interior and the mm -hmm. like passenger or interior driving experience. And the EQS felt like we're Mercedes. We know how to do luxury, but we don't really know how to do the tech. It's like. Too many screens, too glossy. Yeah, a bunch of weird things, a like weird Galaxy Tab Two, like in the in back. The back it's just like, yeah, we're luxury, but we don't know tech. The Lucid was like the refined version of all of that. It was yeah. the knobs were perfect. There was a really good mix of real buttons and touchscreen and the mm -hmm. the folding down screen and a couple little quirks in the software, like you mentioned. But man, the interior of that when I I just got to drive it to the back when we were shooting, and I was like, wow. This yeah. is, I would love to sit in this. You every forget day. about the outside real quick. Yeah. I do. I will say the uh, the EQS comparison is accurate. When I I got a chance to actually visit Lucid's headquarters briefly before I came back to the East Coast and got to test the car, and what I noticed is they had a bunch of their competitors just like lined up in the front door of their headquarters, yeah. and they had a Tesla Model S, a Mercedes EQS, and a Porsche Taycan. And they had them for three different reasons. So the Lucid compares favorably in a certain way to each one. Yeah. For the Tesla Model S, same wheelbase, same length, more rear legroom. Okay. That's just because of how they've organized it. Smaller trunk. I went over that in the video. Like, that's a compromise they made, and it works. Uh, EQS, much bigger. So the Lucid is smaller than the EQS to achieve the same legroom. Okay. And then Taycan, obviously, is different. It's a sport car, but more legroom in all dimensions in the Lucid, yeah. obviously. Um, and that's their thing. So yeah, it is It is mainly focused on the interior, which I think we did a great job with. Um, I don't know how much you're willing to pay for a car that doesn't yet have access to Tesla superchargers. That might be a thing soon, maybe. Yeah, there's there's some weird news coming out about that too with the, like, them offering their charging system up yeah. to other cars. Essentially which... the port. The port, which I'm also confused, is that going to be their way to give supercharging to other people? Because they, one of the ways, yeah, yeah. It, they, it reminds me of like it kind of feels like offering the lightning port to other phone manufacturers, yeah. and it's like, yeah, we've got MFI, and you can, if you want, put a lightning port in your phone, and it'll work with lightning accessories, which is like the kingdom that we've built. It's kind of the same thing with Tesla superchargers, but at this point, like you're you're getting really fast peak charging on these cars, but only if you can find an Electrify America charger that handles 350 kilowatts, that's working, that isn't occupied and not broken. But you have a hundred over 100 more miles of range on it. That's true. That's massive. So like that is really big. Yeah. You can go an entire, at least for me, for my commute, I could go an entire week back and forth commuting really? and not charge. That's crazy. I also was really hoping you would have like one of your Boston or like uh, like ultimate tournament trips where you wouldn't have had to charge. You probably would have had to charge when you got there and then could have made it back. Boston, I could go there and back without charging. There and back without? Yep. yep. About 400 miles. I really wish you had the chance to do that because yeah. like I, I'd be interested to see someone who has to plan a charging trip into everything, not yeah. have to do that. And now learning that there's an 87,000, still very expensive car, yeah. and generally chances you're getting that actual car under 100 by the time yeah. you like factor everything in is probably pretty tough, but 100,000 at over 400 is kind of yeah. awesome. That, that will be, I think, the main, uh, we keep thinking about like reasons you would get a certain EV or over another and like which ones you're cross shopping. So the person who would theoretically get the Lucid Air Pure, the $87,000 version of this car, is probably cross shopping against things like a Model S or maybe an EQS is more expensive. But like this is half the price of the $160,000 car we tested. And I'm like, the range has got to be the number one reason you go with this For car. Sure. Um, I've noticed also that the accuracy of the range that it predicts that you will get is pretty close, much better than Tesla, not as good as Rivian. Rivian's is incredible. Okay. Um, in Tesla, like, 
you can line up at the zero and have a target 200 miles away and it'll say you have 250 miles of battery and you might not make it because <laughs> if That's you drive crazy. a certain way you can use way more power than it's rated to do during that normal driving trip. That, that's something I found really interesting testing all these and, and asking you guys who have Teslas is it seems to be a lot of you guys think Tesla has one of the worst range estimators inside it's, of their it's, car. It's, it's, yeah, I would say it's the most variable. Okay. So Which is I, not a good thing. Right, yeah. like I know that if I drive a certain way, I can and will get great range. Mm -hmm. If I drive like without accelerating hard in chill mode and I don't like go up and down too many massive hills, whatever, like a normal drive, I will get my range. But if I do one pull, which is like, I, it, it's a nice fast car, I wanna yeah. do one highway pull. You can lose 10 miles of range in 10 seconds in less than a mile of driving. Yeah. So like that type of peak power is what you pay for to get that amazing performance, but now you have 10 miles less of range. And just any little thing you do might eat into your range. So I think the the Rivian, for example, is a lot more conservative where it's just like, you'll get 300 miles of range kind of no matter how hard you drive. Okay. And if you drive conservatively, you might get more. So. I, think, I think that's awesome. Yeah. I think all the legacy manufacturers are gonna be on that conservative I think thing. So. I, think. I think that's the way, yeah. So anyway, watch the Lucid Air review if you haven't already. There's a main channel video. It's awesome. I will say the first 10 seconds are literally incredible. Oh, Brandon just, I'm kind of biased, yeah, yeah. but you should watch it. There's also an autofocus channel video. We'll link them in the show notes. For sure. They're both great. And I'll include that clip where you guys can hear uh, the guy like, like oh, okay. that's a nice car. Anyway, we'll take a quick break. We got to talk about the Pixel Fold when we come back. But first, let's hear our first trivia question. All right, trivia time. So, Tesla Powerwall's electric, electric Lucid Air. We've been talking a lot about electricity, so here's an electric question. How many watts of electric power can an electric eel produce? I feel like I said electric a lot there. Probably. How many watts? We do a lot. How many watts of electric power? Like like max? Like peak? Yeah, peak. Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy. Also, side note, have you guys seen that TikTok guy who has a basement full of eels? Yes. It's so cool. Whoa. Yo, can we talk about eel basement guy? <laughs> yeah. That guy, dude, that account is so, and like the creepy dungeon door he like yes. climbs down. Oh my God. We'll so link it in the show notes. Fabulous. We'll put a clip up on the An channel. Aquarium? He no. has a basement that's just like flooded and has a ladder into it. And that's terrible. Wow. And has a bunch of eels. It's really cool. He's in danger. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> okay. That's going to be a news report in like a year of like dead guy found in basement being chewed apart by. Oh, no. Eels. God forbid. God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. All right. Well, we'll think about that eel for a little bit. Be right back. This episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. You've got to get to the doctor. Not like right now, but hopefully eventually you should get to the doctor, right? A lot of people put that off though because finding a great doctor is a bit of a pain. Uh, if you want an easy tech forward solution though to finding one, you need to check out ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. ZocDoc has a huge selection of primary care physicians, specialists and more. So you can find the perfect doctor whether you need a checkup, wanna get your teeth straightened or wanna have that mole looked at. Scheduling is easy so you can do it all right from the app. So go to ZocDoc.com slash waveform and download ZocDoc, the app, for free, and then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash waveform. ZocDoc.com slash waveform. Mac approved. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Let's talk about this Pixel Fold or this rumored Pixel Fold, yeah. anyway. Okay, so this is coming from a render, thanks to Front Page Tech. They've mm -hmm. corroborated a bunch. Typically what happens with these renders is somebody gets a leak, and you can't just publish exactly what you got, otherwise you're sort of outing the person who gave you the information. So mm -hmm. you take that information, you give it to a talented graphic designer, they mock up something that looks like what was told to you, you publish that, it's a leak that looks like the real thing. That's what we got. Sort of a pseudo design of a foldable, Pixel phone. Yeah, and I want to preface this by saying, like, these are obviously still rumors, and we don't always talk about rumors, but let's be real, this is Google, and I wouldn't be, be surprised real. if this shoot showed up at someone's house when they That's order a the Pixel thing. 7 randomly. That's so. the thing. The, the Google train is, like, when things leak, they just, it, they pour. Yeah. Like, they, they Niagara Falls, like, fully, oh, is your flashlight on? I think your flashlight is on. I was about to, yeah, your flashlight's on. Bro, what chill. happened to your Pixel over there? I was just gonna say, I'm, I've been using the Pixel 7 Pro 
as my daily phone since it came out, actually. No significant phones have come out since the Pixel 7 Pro to make me want to switch. I had been using the S21 Ultra for like a year and a half or something yeah. like that. I thought I was going to go back to it. Pixel 7 Pro has been rock solid, and I'm very happy so far. That is awesome. Would you use a foldable Pixel? Do you even want a foldable Pixel? Because here's the uh, thing. I'm just to, okay. just to paint the picture a little bit. Google phones, not known for their hardware quality, right? Foldable phones, really hard to do great hardware. So to buy a foldable Pixel over the other foldables, you'd be buying it to get the awesome camera and the Google software experience and the computational smarts, not the great hardware. Would that would that I, be a good phone? The thing is, is I think I might even disagree a little bit on that because I do think, I think the Pixel 6 started having pretty solid hardware and then they kind of cleaned up that hardware in the Pixel 7. And I think it feels like a really solid like it solidly is. built phone. Fair. Um, that actually is one of the things in this rumor is they said it's heavy and really like built solidly. But I do think one of the other things in this rumor again, like judging by the looks of it, and we've heard this months ago that people said the form factor is going to be closer to like an Oppo Find N, which is different than all the other folding phones we're having. Right. So that might even be one of, if you prefer that shorter and wider in stature a little more type compact, of foldable close. that might be why you come to this yeah like a passport type size yeah yeah i think that'll be cool uh look i like the google software experience so i'm if they can put together a good enough hardware experience yeah. i i think that'd be nice i'm looking at this room right now it looks like it's got all it's got three cameras on it so yep. it might have the same set of cameras as the pro phone which would be great. Yeah, real quick on that before we move on. Mm -hmm. So since they can't do the camera bump into the edges yeah. because it's folding now and one of the edges has to be a hinge, they kind of did this rounded edge protruded camera bump. Looks about as thick, maybe even a little thicker than what the camera bump on the 7 is. It's um, a dynamic island. I I like it. I feel like, um, do you know Xiaomi started doing these like really thick camera bumps squares but not like yes yeah, squares yeah. yeah this yeah. looks like that but as a like rectangle almost an oval with the rounded edges i dig it it's also in a gray in this render i don't know if that's yeah. gonna match but it looks just like the dynamic island on the phone just like oh yeah up. yeah because it's the got the like bubble cutouts. popped off from mm -hmm. the bigger cutout uh cut out camera on the front screen and then a large somewhat slim bezels on the inside screen i would argue probably thickest bezels out of all the foldables, unless you're counting the Surface Duo, which we all know is. Yeah, um, right, which is not even a folding screen. Yeah, it does, it does also seem like on the inside that the bezels on the top are larger because that's where the camera and sensors are. That makes sense. Um, so that's the Google way though. Not Don't go too crazy with the hardware. Just give us like standard fine hardware and then just top off, you know, the, I like, the I think it looks up good. there. It makes the screen look more cohesive. Yeah, so then it's like, would you would you want a foldable pixel over a regular pixel? Because then you have to worry about the software experience and like how you split up and multitask and do you use the outside screen for some things inside for others. I really like a lot of the foldable like experiences. Like mm -hmm. I like using the Galaxy Folds a lot. Um, the one interesting part of the form factor is with the Galaxy Fold, you can get used to it after a while, but the outside screen is very narrow. And so you don't feel like you're yeah. getting the, the full smartphone experience on the outside. I mean, you can type, but the keyboard's kind of small. Yeah. Uh, the Oppo Find N felt like a normal usable smartphone. It was just a thick smartphone because yeah. it was folded. So I don't think this one's going to be particularly thin. That's fine. They're not going to do anything stunning like Xiaomi or Huawei or anything like that. It's just going to be a normal, standard folding phone. Don't think too hard about it, but... But you do get twice as much phone. Like what you said, though, in terms of the exterior screen, I think I would prefer that than the like really long candy bar shape of the like more smushed down regular phone. So like, same. While I don't love smolding, while Smoldering. I don't, while I don't love folding phones right now, and that's just a preference thing. Like, I don't know, maybe the smaller size. I think both of us agreed that when the Find N came out, we held it and we we're like, oh, I really dig this nice. shape. Like yeah. this. Uh, design layout feels a little more comfortable and yes it is thick i would not doubt if the like the actual size of this thing is exactly the same as the the oppo it's find be very similar i yeah. bet it'll be super similar. the biggest downside is just gonna be the thickness exactly basically yeah i could see it i'm interested i'm definitely interested i i don't think this is going to be coming anytime soon i think maybe next year is the earliest they we can see this the front page text says may 
Okay. That's not that far away. That is not that far away. That's half a year. That would be really interesting. That's right before IO, which is usually summer. Before IO, do you know what? I, I'm Why excited they, for it. Usually, I mean, May is weird because I would expect like IO to be like, all right, here's all our new interesting folding phone software. And then you get the phone or you get the phone at the same time. I think that, but I think people also think this might come out around the same time as the tablet, which would make sense to be before IO because they already announced the tablet at IO. So maybe this just okay. becomes some sort of an event, which also more earlier tech events I'm totally down for. Sometimes sure. I'm tired of waiting for just three months of absolute cramming every single thing in and tech us over. going crazy. Yeah. Um, so like, let's get some more stuff in the middle of the year. I am excited for it. I would be willing to try it. Here's why I wouldn't buy it because the approximate price rumor is eighteen hundred dollars. Ah, classic, classic I folding mean, phone. Folding phones are expensive. Yeah, totally understand that. First gen, eighteen hundred bucks. They mm. everyone else has done it, so like I don't blame them, and I get why they're doing it. But mm. that's a who that's a doozy. It is interesting that we're seeing more and more folding phones. The one other thing that I was going to mention is the fingerprint reader yes. sensor is rumored to be in the power button, which would match some of the other folding phones we've seen, like the Samsung Galaxy Fold, for yeah. example. Uh, so not like under the display or behind the phone or anything like that. But yeah, we've seen a bunch more folding phones uh, of various form factors and various interesting things about them, whether it's the thinness or the cameras or the the screen ratios or whatever they are. So I'm interested. I think 800 bucks would be right in line with all the other stuff we've seen. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Which I still think is a hard selling point. Yeah. Really quick back on the fingerprint sensor thing. I, I like made a note in here because the power button fingerprint sensor makes the most sense, right? Because then you can unlock it from folded or unfolded. Right. Whereas like an in-display fingerprint sensor on the front is tough because then you would also have to have it on the inside. We have not had any phones with that yet, right? An no. interior one. Nope. The problem is, is the renders of this, the power button looks like extruded quite a bit like a regular power button and every fingerprint sensor power button we've ever seen is generally indented yeah so um some of these renders now that could be a few things it could be could the renders be are just a little off bad render or something it could be i mean i kind of wonder we had got face unlock on pixel six and seven face unlock would also make sense through the selfie camera on the front and the inside Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think people trust face unlock on some of these. I've been enjoying face unlock on mine. I wanted yeah. it for face unlock. I've been enjoying it. I don't know. But for some reason, this power button in the render doesn't scream fingerprint sensor to me. It just doesn't look like the right type of button for it. Interesting. We shall see. We'll I mean, see. I think Google is willing to try weird stuff, clearly. Also, I could be wrong, but the folding Samsung phones, the um, camera on the inside, is it worse than the one on the outside? Yeah, the, you're talking about the under-display selfie camera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's awful. Just <laughs> awful. Um, but it's there in case you want to take a selfie. Now, with this one, there are some bezels, and we don't know what... I don't know what's in those bezels. In in the the rumor report, it's the camera's in the bezel. Camera's up in, in the, the bezel. top right, yeah. That, that seems okay, to make so sense. It, they could potentially have the same camera on the outside and inside, like one yeah. good enough for face on I selfie. want yeah. to say... If I remember from front page text uh, article that the only spec they have is 9.5 megapixel camera on the front end on the inside for selfie. Okay. Um, so maybe matching. That feels obviously like a much harder thing to confirm. Like designs usually come out first, total specs. And if they don't list any other specs, I, I wonder about it. But like it seems in line with, doesn't yeah. seem unreasonable. Would you rather have thin bezels with a crappy front-facing camera under screen, or would you rather have these slightly bigger bezels with a camera that's much more usable? At this point in technology, I would rather have the thicker bezels. Okay. I think in I a couple years, you. my answer would change. Yes. You're both wrong. <laughs> no, I, no, I agree. I don't <laughs> want to like... Have you... You've seen the just terrible quality of those cameras? Yeah, but I wouldn't use the selfie camera then. That's true. I, I never use uh, it. I never really use it. I do think that I use it because it's so bad. But if you really need to take a picture, just turn the phone around. That's like, it's annoying, it yeah. but... Yeah, well, I mean, there is, like, if you Zoom or FaceTime or something... Well, not FaceTime, obviously, but if you Zoom or, or video chat on mm -hmm. some other program, like, yeah. in there... Yeah, maybe the quality doesn't need to be great, but yeah, like I think matter. I'm gonna rather. Even I don't with think like you're... a 1080p webcam, 
the internet still makes me look terrible over Zoom calls. Yeah, well, this makes you look terrible and makes it look like you're underwater. <laughs> so, I don't Rubbing know. Rubbing Vaseline on your screen. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, no, I guess I'm the pixel peeper, so I'd be a little biased, but maybe I'm outside of the norm there. I, I think I'm with you. the better quality. I don't think you get enough screen real estate, especially now that it's a folding phone and you have so much screen real estate. I don't think you're losing or gaining enough of it to sacrifice yeah, quality. and you're only getting vertical pixels, which is just more blank pixels if exactly. you're watching yeah, videos exactly. or doing anything. So I'm fine with this. Yeah, so we both agree Adam's wrong. Yeah, I think cool. we're on the same page. Perfect. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, no, I, I like it. I'm looking forward to it. Let's say it is May. Uh, I will be keeping my eye out for all of the subsequent leaks that are definitely going to happen. Yeah. Because that's what happens with Google. Do phones. you think I, Samsung's happy about this or upset about this? I think Samsung is in this funny position where... Whoever else makes a foldable, they can just claim that it's because Samsung started it. And as long as none of them outsell Samsung's foldables, they'll feel pretty good about it. So there's no threat with the Pixel is what you're saying? (laughs) Minimal threat because Pixels don't sell nearly as much as Samsung phones. They're they're playing, Google's playing catch up. Samsung's ahead ahead already. Like they don't have to worry for a little bit. I mean, it's also how much does the fold for? Does it still cost less than 1800 bucks now? No, it's about the same. Okay. It's about the same. So it's going to be like, which one would you rather buy? The, the Samsung one that's in the yeah. carrier store already or the Pixel that's brand new, 1800 bucks, and you've never seen before? Probably yeah. still going to buy the Samsung one. We'll see. If um if you test it out and then decide not to use it, I will volunteer as tribute to try and live a totally full fair. life with it. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, May 2023. Next year's may be more interesting in the non-Tech Timber season. Maybe. Based on what we're hearing. I think it probably will it be. Maybe. It, it's not coming out in May. May. Nice. It may be in May. Oh my God. All right, let's do trivia. Yeah, let's stop. <laughs> All right, so God, I don't know why. I'm always like smacking my lips every question. I remove it every week, but now there's a camera on me. So, you know, anyway, that aside, we've had a lot of fun with it in the office, Dolly 2, but where does Dolly get its name from? I mean, it's an acronym. I know. But... Oh, well, let's just go. Never mind. Is it an acronym? Is yeah, it a we'll backronym? Is it, a, is it neither? Does it just exist? Is it the name of an old Danish king? <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. Uh, I will think about that and I'll probably... I know we've talked about it before. Not on the... We have talked about it before we when to. we were first discovering Dolly. Oh, no. I don't fully remember it, but I know we've talked okay, about good, it. Okay, good. Me neither. Okay, okay. fine. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I just want to point out uh, the clippy, ugly Christmas sweater that Microsoft dropped this year is the best, ugliest Christmas sweater that I've ever seen. Oh, man. If you specifically want an ugly Christmas sweater, this is the one. There might uh, be a there, much there better might be looking, a cooler one. There might be yeah. a much cooler looking Christmas sweater if you're into looking cool. But if you want to look terrible, this <laughs> is the one. Thank you, Microsoft. It's, I uh, love Microsoft. Happy holidays from Clippy. Um, man, I kind of isn't Clippy kind of. We've probably said this before. The original uh, assistant, virtual assistant. <laughs> if we're working, if we're comparing voice assistants, though, like Google Assistant, OG. it's supposed to like recognize the context of what you're doing in your daily life and present information that might be helpful to you. Like, oh, you're about to walk outside. Let's tell you what the weather is. Oh, you're about to drive to work. Let me tell you what the traffic is on the way there. Oh, you've got a flight later today. Let me tell you like yeah. how early to get to the airport. Clippy is like, are you writing a letter? Here's how you do that. And that's that's a virtual assistant. Cl- Clippy what? walked so everyone else could exactly. run. Yeah. Did, exactly. Did Clippy predate Bonzi Buddy? Was that? I don't even know what that now is. I, now I'm lost. Uh, I, maybe I have Bonzi not heard Buddy of this. should have been a trivia. Bonzi Buddy was oh like God. a Clippy. It's very similar. It's like a purple gorilla. And it would do things like contact management and oh calendar goodness. management. And it came out that it was spyware. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, stealing unbelievable amounts of your data. Uh, I don't know what would have been done with that data in the late 90s. Yeah, that's, oh a, that's a good question. This. this looks vaguely familiar. It has like a really silly sounding voice. I don't know if we can pull up. Uh... The release, interesting. Um, I'm checking the Wikipedia right now. Bonzi Buddy was first stable in 2005, where Clippy shipped in Office 2000. But Bonzi Buddy's initial release was 1999. So... 
uh, I guess you can give the timeline edge to Bonzi Buddy. Am I even saying that right? I guess so, Bonzi Buddy. Uh, but I'd never heard of that. Too bad it was spyware. <laughs> That's huh. a bummer. Clippy was pretty universally... <laughs> Clippy was universally loved, I would say. Clippy. Fine. That's what he sounds like. Whoa. He's Isn't young. Past your bedtime, sands on your tail. Oh, that's like an evil movie computer voice. It's not great. That sounds like a horror when you movie. Finished, simply click the continue button below. Yeah. I will automatically re-register you. It sounds like if like <laughs> like a kid was sleeping and their like CRT monitor in their bedroom turned on and started flashing, yeah. like that's the yeah. noise that would be coming out of it. The voice that would come out of it. Strange. Yeah, you can hear it like synthesize like stitching together syllables. You can like <laughs> yeah. hear the syllables happening. Amazing. But yeah, Clippy Sweater, top notch. Um, I, in, there might be another cool sweater coming out later this year. We might have some inside info I think, in I it. I think we can count on it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm technically not leaking anything. I'm just saying I think that's I think there might be a cool one coming yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But last subject I have to wrap up this episode. Sure. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me if I'm still using the Pixel Watch. I just thought I would do a little update. I'm not. But... I'm on the Galaxy Watch 5 now, baby. Whoa, what happened? Okay, so okay, explain, so, explain why no more Pixel Watch. Okay. It, my, it's hard to explain because while the Pixel Watch did not get great reviews, and I think they were all warranted, like I don't think anyone anything anyone said about the Pixel Watch was like not true. I actually wound up enjoying the experience a bit. I did like how it looked, actually. It grew on me quite a bit. Same. I think it is proof that the Apple Watch would look better circular, not square, because it kind of just felt like a circle Apple Watch. Um, it just like, I didn't get that sense of enjoyment out of it anymore. I found myself waking up in the morning, going to work and looking at my wrist and being like, oh, I don't have my watch on. I just like didn't even think of putting it on this morning. Mm. And maybe that was just like la the tracking, the automatic tracking, turning it on and off. I didn't love that much, so I stopped kind of using it for my activity tracking, which is something I really enjoy on a Pixel Watch. So it, it almost was just a regular watch to me. You it was miss, digital that I had to charge every single night. You don't miss looking down at your wrist and knowing your heart rate every single second of the day. <laughs> that was pretty sick. I Yeah, I, I don't know. It just like it didn't quite have it didn't feel worth putting it on every morning, which sounds so mean because I like. Did enjoy it when I had it, and I did constantly look at it and be like, "I think this is a really nice looking watch." Battery makes such a big difference in it does. that, where you have to like think about how annoying you're gonna, how annoyed you're gonna be that you're gonna have to charge it over and over again. Yes, and the funny thing is, is the Galaxy Watch Five that I'm wearing right now mm -hmm. is minusculely better in terms of battery life. Um, yeah. But I just think I like the overall package much more. One thing I have learned from the Pixel Watch is I enjoy the smaller form factor. So we have very different watches on right now. You have an Apple Watch Ultra. I'm using the yeah. 40 mil uh, Galaxy Watch 5. So I went with the smaller version because I liked the Pixel Watch and I'm really, really liking that decision. Okay. Um, so I can't directly compare battery life to the Watch 4 I was using because that was the bigger one, which I assume potentially might have a little better battery life. Um, but I'm ending the day around 30%, which is, if you want to sleep track, that might not be enough, honestly. Right. You have to charge it again before going to sleep. Yes, but I do not do that, so I don't care that much. I enjoy the fitness tracking aspects of it much better. I think it's a little clearer when you're looking at it. I think a lot of the things inside some of the activities just track a little better and give me better information. So I enjoy that. And I the flat top... The domed top on the Pixel Watch, I got a couple scratches on it from climbing, and I knew like there's a certain movement sometimes where you're climbing where your watch hits the wall. Oh, that's doomed. And that thing will be destroyed, just like the Apple Watch I had. Yeah. The Galaxy Watch 4 I had got crushed climbing. I wore it for six months and never got a scratch on the screen somehow. I got okay. some on like the metal on the outside, but now this one's the silver outside, so you won't see that because it won't chip paint off. Right. And... I think the screen seems to be one of the more durable ones I've found. So, so far, so good. Yeah, I okay. like it a lot so far. I've only been using it for like a week, but everything seems to be just minusculely better than the 5, even though I'm using the smaller one. And also, Galaxy watch faces are so good. I love yeah. this watch face. I that was just going to ask. It's you have to like so good. download a different app to do that? Nope, it's in the Galaxy watch app. Mm. It matches your jacket conveniently right now? It's with the colors. really nice. Yeah, like th this one has so much information without being a total cluttered mess. Like, hey, what's your heart rate real quick? Um, 
73. Oh, you I didn't even get to check mine. Are you nervous? Yours yeah. isn't on. I think I have a high Every heart second. rate because the minute I stopped playing Ultimate, I oh. turned into a it measured it four minutes ago. Valorant player instead, and they don't have high heart rates for 40, good heart rates. 46. You're 46? Four minutes ago when it measured me last. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I can do it again. See, I don't like that watch face. Some of the Apple watch faces feel uh, super cluttered to it me. It does. I like it better when it's monocolored, actually. And I have this like crazy gradient of colors, mainly because yeah. I can like tell at a glance without actually reading the numbers what's happening. Like I can see the temperature is cold because it's blue without me going, oh, it's 43. Okay. I can see my battery is good because it's green instead of knowing 67. And if it's red, it'll be down I below I think 10. we're showing the exact same stuff. So you've got... I've got battery. Yep. Temperature. Yep. Uh, my activity tracking, the date, the time, and the UV, Are you running an activity sun. right now, or is that just no. like a quick launch? That's a shortcut into... to launch a okay. workout and a shortcut to measure my heart rate. I don't have that. I We both have UV. We both have heart rate. We both have battery. Yep. Both have steps on the front? Yep. Okay. And then, yeah, I have current weather, including the weather for the next two hours, and then date, and then- You if, just have temperature like, or all more- Temperature, and then I have like sunny, cloudy, oh, yeah, whatever on top. Well, although um, that's UV, so pretty I close. I think mine looks better. I cleaner. agree. I do not like oh, the way wow. the I don't like the way the watch face looks, and I think about others to change it to all the time, and then I inevitably change it to one that looks a little bit worse. Yeah, <laughs> and then I go back to it. That's my other thing is I wish I just liked I, I like digital watches or digital time for some reason because it feels so much quicker, and oh, I yeah. felt that the digital watch faces I, on the Galaxy Watch. If I could get rid of the analog clock. I would. I, I never like use people, the hands. Yeah. Ever. I literally. Yeah, I knew I that. never <laughs> That's what everybody work. listening at home yeah. is trying to find that yeah. dud button right I, now. It, if you asked me what time it was and you gave me the hands, it would take me 10 <laughs> seconds. To if I asked you what time it was, would you pull your phone out right now? It would be faster for me to pull my phone out than to, to <laughs> look at the it. hands and be like, okay, let's see. So that's 12, so that's 11. So that's like a half, so 11. That's half the fun. I hate to admit. You get to remind yourself all the time that you can still tell time. That's like writing in cursive. I hate to admit yeah. <laughs> how much I agree, and I know my wife's currently probably teaching time at school right now to mm -hmm. kids, and I'm sitting here like, I don't want to know that. So kids yeah. are still learning to read with the hands, right? Yeah. Okay. So like everyone who has a digital clock everywhere surrounding them in life is learning to read it with hands, and then one day yeah. they'll see like a grandfather clock. Or They're like, also still told that you won't have a calculator in your pocket all the time. I can't so. believe they still tell people <laughs> this. You do have a calculator everywhere <laughs> you go. You literally just yell Google Assistant, and it'll just tell you the answer. Um, anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. So you like the that watch was pretty now. Much. Yeah. I mean, I think we kind of got to the end of it. I really yeah. dig it. I would like though, uh, anyone on Twitter hit me up. I want watch band recommendations because the default one's fine, but like the Apple trail loop is the greatest thing in existence that I want one so bad for just a different watch. Get I've been, Adam. okay. I, I like the trail loop. Uh, the one thing I will say is this little orange tab, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you sweat, it's decoloring. It's it's oh. getting like this weird patina. Uh, maybe I guess it's it it's fine. It's, Wait, can you do that Velcro ASMR? Yeah, ASMR. That was crisp. I didn't expect it to be that good. I'd... But that yes. was actually really good. That was nice. <laughs> that's a good. That's a quality mic right there. Uh, but yes, I do wear the Trail Loop kind of every day now. But I don't wear it for Ultimate because I put the sports strap back on because it just snug. Really? It yeah yeah this thing. Just a little, it gets like kind of soggy and weird when it's wet. Mm. I don't like that. Soggy watch band. Yeah, I don't like the soggy, nice. soggy trail it. band. It makes it feel like I'm doing something. It, yes. <laughs> it reminds yes, me I'm fair. actually sweating. Not to once. get super gross, but does it like smell after you shower? Like after it gets wet. Does Do you it shower with like, your watch on? Yeah. Oh, I don't shower with the band or oh, with the watch at all. Off? Okay. I just take it off. I just take it So that's when I charge my watch. Mm. I guess you don't really charge your watch very much. Not my real watch, but the Apple watch I used to charge. Oh, and and yeah. you wore it in the shower? Yeah. Did you check your heart rate in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I No, I always, that's the, so I sleep track with it. So anytime I'm about to go to sleep and I take a shower, that's when I get like I, plus 20% batteries when I'm showering and then okay. wake up and then charge it a little bit in the morning, so. My watch, so the Ultra basically like hovers between 30 and 70% all the time. Interesting. How if do I get, you live like that? If I get to charge it every day, it's like always between 30 and 70. I, if I ever forget to charge it for a day, I'll get it down to like 10%. I that's will like say, two full days. I do like the Apple Watch Ultra. Yeah. I actually think it works way better as a square in this form factor. It looks a hundred times better. Yeah, it would look crazy as a huge circle, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's I don't know. There's circle. something really like industrial and neat. I think this is. I don't think the regular glass domed Apple Watch that square 
has that same feeling. Yeah, and I, I just think circle. that kind of sucks. Fair. Maybe we'll see a redesign at some point. Um, well, that's kind of it. The videos on the channel this week, uh, I think are really good. I believe the iPad M2 Pro review will be up by the time you see this, in which I also speculate that we'll probably, we'll be seeing some sort of adjustments to the iPad design okay. at some point. I think we get some display improvement. I think we get some uh, functional improvement, whether it's better speakers or maybe they try to do MagSafe or maybe it's something else. Mm -hmm. But I just <laughs> did not sound excited <laughs> no. about that. But I do know um, this M2 iPad Pro is basically the same as the M1 iPad Pro. So no need to worry if you already have one of the last two years of iPad Pros. Um, so check out that review. I think it's a fun one too. Check out the Lucid review. And uh, I think that's it. We should probably get to answering the trivia questions yeah. finally. Trivia time. Get your whiteboards. All right. All good? Got it? Got it. Going with question number one. Tesla Powerwall's electric lucid air, all electric things. <laughs> How many watts of electric power can an electric eel produce? This is hard. I have this so is... much context. I know exactly how much wattage is required of many household things. Well, we were looking it up because when we did the EcoFlow, it had a list of how much it was. And some yeah. of them are really funny because heating elements are vastly like uh, yeah. your hair dryer was like 100 watts and a refrigerator was like 35 or something, which is yeah. crazy. No, it's like a thousand watts for a for a heater. A thousand? Yeah. Like a, a PC is like you have a one a thousand watt power supply. That's the the peak power that can go through it, like a thousand watts. Uh, a microwave might be a thousand watts, right? I'm going to just double check. This okay. Yeah. To make sure. But like. Uh, the, so many of the cars we drive, for example, will tell us exactly how many kilowatts of energy it takes. I have no idea how much an eel can make. Oh, you're right. A hair dryer is 800 to 1800 watts. Yeah. So like over a thousand watts. But like an eel is like a, it's a total mystery. It's It must be enough to damage a enemy fish. <laughs> and <laughs> that's all I know. So I'm going to guess a ridiculous. Oh, well. No, I'm just going to write what I was going to write. No. Wait. <laughs> I hope I'm close. No, I'm going to stick with this. Okay. I think we might be. I'm going low. Oh, perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> very 50 different. watts. We might be very far from the answer. Good luck figuring out who's closest. I wrote 10,000 watts. I wrote 50. Jesus. There it is. I knew it was coming. That's <laughs> oh, no. awesome. For those of you listening to audio, Ellis oh. has turned our lights in the back into did they both blink red okay oh, that's they both awesome blink red. they blink red i hope they blink green if we get it right but who is so what's well, the answer what's the closest the answer is 600 watts oh, meaning oh, mark has no no i'm far, far i'm 50 he's ten thousand. Oh, <laughs> i thought you wrote, thought you wrote a thousand watts i wrote ten thousand watts Oops. Okay, All right. 600. So a, a hair dryer would win in a battle versus an electric eel is what I'm hearing. No, they just both die, <laughs> I think. So Marquez has 15 now, Andrew still has 12, and David has 9. Wait, still has <laughs> no, no, 12? I should have zero points for that. I should get an extra point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. We messed that up entirely. Yeah, yep. you so did mess that up. <laughs> 14, 13. 13. Andrew has 13, Marquez has 14. Let's there we go. go. Okay. Producers have negative one. <laughs> Also, if there's any zoologists listening right now, um, can electric eels survive 600 watts? Like in the eventual hairdryer versus electric eel challenge. Yeah, I think they have to. Like, right. But do they? I don't know. They've got, they're, they're like, they're built different. <laughs> there's the scientific they're, explanation they of have to you. yeah i please, guess so please don't throw a hair dryer in an eel tank to no, find no, no, out. no no but, no um, don't. yeah if, yeah google says that they've reduced the danger to themselves by flexing their bodies in a shape that prevents the electric current from passing through their hearts oh they're smart dang dang oh. that's smart they're still getting shocked but just protecting the yeah important huh bits. all right question number two where does doll e get its name Okay, I think this is an acronym, but I don't know what it stands for. I just... Uh. I I know, like, half of it, I think. D-A-L-L-E. Two. D-A-L-L-E, yeah, two. Dolly two. I can't wait to see what Marquez is writing. Okay, I got it. I have an answer. Ready? It's wrong. Ready? <laughs> Flip. 
read it out, please. Dal- okay, so mine is, I believe it's the mix of the name Dolly, like the artist, and then I put Wally, like the robot. Let's go. Wow. Marquez, what was your acronym? <laughs> I thought it was an acronym. So I made one up. <clears throat> I wrote diffusion and lenticular lens extension. I appreciate that. Try. Maybe it'll turn into a backronym. They'll see this episode and they'll mm-hmm. be like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I don't think it does, but it could. Why not? Dolly. High Bur- game, baby. The artist. Who is Dolly? 14. Salvador, Salvador Dolly. Ah. Yeah. Very famous. Uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's zero points for me this week. Oh, two. Mac, two zero points for me this week. Really disappointed in myself. Well, that's fine. I still get to pit Mac. Uh, that's been <laughs> it for this week. <laughs> Appreciate you watching and listening. And of course, we're checking out the links in the description as we always put. Um, don't make fun of me too much for missing both of the trivia questions this week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys eventually in the next one. Peace. Yeah, make sure to subscribe. We have some fun episodes coming up, by the way. It's hit and end of year, so we have some kind of slow tech news equals fun episodes, I guess. A couple things in the works for December. Oh, yeah. So subscribe. You already know. But Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rubin. We are partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network. And our intro, outro music is by Vane Silk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it. <laughs>